School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. Uh, I'm Doug Moisey, uh, Canola Council Agronomy Specialist based out of Northeastern Alberta. My uh, specialty within the council is stand establishment and a lot of questions come to us every year about what's wrong with my field, uh, what's going on, and so we have to ask ourselves to find that is we have to take what I call a CSI approach, which is a canola stand establishment issues uh, system. What we're going to look at here is we want to look at things that are going to happen in the field. So typically when a producer will phone me up, come and look at my canola crop, some of the first things I will do is actually go look at his equipment. And the reason being is, is that I want to take a look and I want to know what kind of equipment we're dealing with. What kind of openers, packers, what's the seeding system. I'll talk to him about fertility rate. I'll talk to him about seeding rate. What was his moisture. I'll go through all the background before I even enter the field. One of the biggest things that we can do as agronomists is sometimes if somebody says, I think it's this, we get this all put into our mind that what we have is that, yes, okay, if I think it's deep seeding and the producer said, well, I think it's frost, you automatically will sometimes look for the frost and sometimes you will see issues that, well, well, maybe it is frost. The idea is to keep a clear and open mind and start looking at different things in the field. One of the first things I do when I come into a field like this is that I will look to see if there's any patterns showing up in the field. Is it every third row? Is it every fourth row? Is it a section? Or is it maybe a hilltops only? Or is it the lowlands? And what I'm going to look for is I'm trying to find places within the field. Other things that I will also look at too as well is, is that I will take a look at what's the weather been like, what are we, we're looking for, but I will sample good places and bad places. So if I come to a field and I find patches that there's nothing hardly there, I will typically look in there and then I'll go right beside where there's a good patch and see if there's any differences that way. The key issue here is, is time. And typically when you take a look at it, if you seeded with canola and you have good soil temperatures, within about 10 days you start to see emergence and that's when you should be out walking in the fields. The reason being is that if there is a disease issue or an insect issue, number one, you can, you can actually correct maybe the insect issue quick enough if it's cut worms or if it's flea beetles. If it's wire worms, it lets you know what's going on because there is no control registered yet for wire worm. But it's also is that if it is a disease, typically if you have a diseased carcass, what can happen is it'll disappear within a couple of days in typical weather patterns. So you may show up 15 or 20 days after you seeded, find these bear patches and you can't figure out the reason why. And so that will actually be a detriment because then you really truly don't know what the answer was. So the real issue here is to get out as soon as possible, start looking, that's going to help you take out and find the answers or potential solutions or should I say, will help you take and get a better idea of potential answers as to what is happening out there. You may never find the solution. Sometimes we have mysteries that we never do solve, but the more in depth you can be at, typically is what you want to look at. So what we have here is a typical hula hoop. And what I'd look is, I, it doesn't matter what you prefer to choose. Some people like to use a meter stick. Some people prefer the quarter square meter, which is what this is, about 21 inches in diameter. Some people use a meter. And what I like to do is, is that if I'm gonna be sampling areas, I like to take a look at what's happening in and around, but I also like to take a look in here. And so, so again, these are some of the things that we like to look at when we're looking in a field. If we're starting to see patterning, some of the symptoms to look for is, for example, if you see that every third or fourth row on, on a pass is showing something where the plants aren't coming up, the suspicion is something was wrong with that boot or with that rank. And either it was deep seeding or maybe there's too much fertility or maybe even the tube was plugged. And so the idea is to go down and slowly start to excavate the row. And what you're going to be looking for is you're going to try to find seed in an area. Now, when I look at a canola stand, we typically like to see plant, plant, plant. Uh, we like to see a nice even, even emergence. But as you can see in this, this area here alone, we've got some bare spots. And so you have to ask yourself, well, what happened to those bare spots? Was it a seed issue as far as not getting enough seed? Or was it getting buried deep? Or was the soil so loose that the shelf wasn't being established? And so you typically want to excavate. Now, if you just take a look what's happening here, we see some plants coming from down below. Here's one that's coming, just coming up now. We've got a bunch of small ones that are coming up, but we've got nothing here, but here's a seed. But you see this nice big clump. 
And so you start asking yourself, did the, maybe the opener ride up? And so you start looking and start digging. The trick here is to go very slowly and excavate. Well, here's one seed here I've just found that's still stranded on the top of the surface. And you can see that's potentially the reason why there is no plant here. And so when guys start looking as that, I've checked my depth, you're still targeting that one inch below the press wheel furrow. But what you want to be looking at here is, is that where did he actually place the seed? And if you take a look here, this opener actually did not, just by looking at this, the opener did not go down very far, so it may have ridden up and stranded the seed. So those are the kind of things that you have to figure out what's going on. As well too is, is that what I also look for is that when a producer phones me up and says, hey, my crop's not coming around or I got very thin spindly, you have to also look at weather. Look at the latest weather station data, what's happened last little while, because sometimes you can see is that a frost has happened. And maybe it was only minus one, but when you have young tender cotyledons coming out of the ground that had not been properly hardened off, they may be susceptible to frost. And you typically see that more in a straw area here where you've got heavier straw going on. And so these can lead to all the non-uniformity that goes on in the field.